know, there is this uh, thing of uh, looking up to uh, I talk to many uh, uh, native uh, Africans uh, who who go to church. They always talk about the Holy Father, um, either the priest or the or the the cardinal or the the, the pope and all the like. The spiritual orders they, they they look at the master. It's all compassionate and love. It's all compassion and love. Well, uh, you don't accept the title of master in uh, your, like in the spiritual orders, uh, but you have gained the mastership of the true reality. Life is. So how do these qualities of compassion and, and love play out in what you are presenting to the world? So you will not tell me that you don't uh, exhibit these qualities too. Then. For me, I see it as, uh, you know, you see what's going on. We've all been through lifetimes of experience, relationships, uh, the sensations of the astral body, the love, the hate, uh, all these things, the thrills, etc. It's all part of it. That's why we're experiencing it. And all the different body types, from animals to birds to fish to whatever, you know, we, we have all that experience. And so now we've come to the point to where um, there's something else uh, that is a lot more so than we've ever known. And so, but that part, uh, you have to decide to see it and recognize it. And so, uh, you know, all I can do is term it a particular way. So we have the idea of love here, which is basically the astral feelings and the things and et cetera, relationships, which is fine. Uh, everybody makes a choice. I go through that, too. I, I, I experience those things. But I see that uh, this recognition of this reality, it becomes completely clean. It's just not uh, a love idea, emotional attachment, or, uh, <clears throat> you know, looking for sensations to equal something. And for the most part, uh, the love idea and the sensations that we experience here are simply body to body. And that's really what it is. And that's fine. That's just, that's just part of it. It's like eating. It's all okay. But when you look at your real awareness, guess what? You don't have to eat or breathe, do you? And so uh, look at the sun shining. I mean, it's perfectly set uh, and demonstrates uh, a real sincerity, a pure sincerity. So what else is there besides what we continually experience here? But again, it's choice. You decide if this is what you want to keep experiencing day after day, life after life. Or do you want to see the bigger picture? Because again, what we experience here is in this little, little tiny place called creation. It's a very little tiny place, but it looks big, doesn't it? Yeah, when you're inside the bubble, it really looks big. But when you're outside the bubble, it's a speck of dust. And so to decide to recognize this reality, oh, that's a whole lot because again, you know, as people come into this, again, they're going to try and bring it around according to the experiences that they've already had. Well, you know, again, th those experiences are a reference, okay, and a comparison. And eventually you realize that, you know, uh, you don't need anymore because the, the nowness life is, the isness life is is everything but you have to recognize it and it's so much better than any love that you've ever had here or any relationship or anything you like or what have you and even the dislikes because many people like to dislike things yeah they really do <clears throat> they like the love hate relationship just like the um, 
just like the cabal, they, the world controllers, they like to hate and see people suffer. That's their, that's their thrill, you see? So you've got all these things going on here. So what can be more so than all of that? Well, again, you know, each person decides to recognize that. And it's not about higher, or lower, or better, or worse, or any of these things. It's just very simple, like the sun shining. Again, any attitude that you have in the personal sense, compare it to the sun. You can have that attitude. You can have whatever you want. You can do whatever you want. That's your personal business. You you will deal with it. Okay. So, uh, but to recognize this reality and to see it for what it is, and it's more than any love. So I call it real love, but it's really more than that, and it's even more than the real freedom that is specified. And so this is where the recognition comes in to where you stand being to being with others. This is the, an awesome position to where you see, you know, what's going on. You really see what life is. It's a scene. And on the whole, it's invisible. But it does have its parts where it is seen. So, but that's a choice, Charles. It's always a choice. And this is a big leap because, again, uh, the biggest thing is, and you listen to people's questions and their concerns. They're always looking at, their, at what they've experienced as their reference only and started, instead of starting something new and taking the risk to see what else, what else happens. You got to do that or it don't, or you just stay stuck with what you've known. And nothing can, nothing can nobody can decide. That. The, the guides cannot decide that for you. They're just guides. Just like you're the teacher in school. You don't live these kids' lives. You share things with them. Really, it's really sharing. You know, the teaching idea. See, we don't teach. I don't teach anything. This is not a teaching or a path. You know, the, the teaching idea is where you're instructing others, isn't it? And then they become basically uh, set in certain ways and indoctrinated. I don't do that anymore. I've been through that. I see that that's very limited. That's where I'm sharing and referring. And so I write a reference, not a teaching or an indoctrination or an instruction, nor is it a program. So, but you got to recognize it. And because people look at the world and see how the world is, and according to their experience, well, that's their only reference. So they just figure, oh, well, this is nothing. And I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. We'll go right ahead and you will just keep recycling as you always have. Because you keep referring to what you've already been through. Instead of taking the risk to see what you can't see. You see? And that's the bigger picture. So it's an interesting journey so far, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I don't know whether um, Eric is uh, on on board so that he can can brief us about uh, Monday's uh, African uh, Block Talk Radio show because I did everything to attain. Uh, my connections were not good at all, and uh, after about uh, 30 minutes, I gave up. So, Eric, can you uh, brief us in your interviews with uh, some of the Africans? Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yeah, Eric. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Um, well, last Monday show, we didn't have any um, special guests, but Tim and Claudie um, and Val did share um, uh, their viewpoints on um, some of the environmental projects going on in Africa. 
Um, and it, all the experiences they shared were wonderful. Um, for the next show, we're going to be focusing a little more on um, the Great Green Wall of Trees, that project that start, that's going on in Africa. And um, I'm going to be attempting to see if I can meet, bring anybody on for an interview. Um, it'd be cool if you could join us, Charles. We can test your connections again before the show. That's pretty much it, though. Mr. Eric, have you had any luck uh, contacting any of the uh, villagers in uh, the United States here with all their organizations and whatever that refer to Africa? No, I found some some organizations and I've I've contacted them, but no one's really contacted me back yet. Okay, uh, maybe you got to do a song and dance or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it's uh, it's interesting. So well, you just you know it's like uh, how I've created this and presented it, and it's taken quite a while for it to catch on. It does, uh, but I've never stopped. It's uh, you know this is what I do, and so again, uh, as you take on doing this, uh, you you see the idea there. We're just trying to relate to people in some way, and yes. For the most part, uh, get a lot of resistance, or they're not concerned, or who are you, or you know everybody's suspect. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting. But uh, okay, well, you know you've got to start there, and uh, I would start in your community first to see what you can round up, uh, just just to let them know. And over time, little by little, so you know, just like uh, when we first uh, Kelsey introduced. Uh, Jillian Juice, and <clears throat> she was very resistant to us. She she rather she rather blackballed us. Jillian did, and then recently here, months and months later, uh, she welcomed the uh, welcomed us back, and it was a total 180. So it does take a little time, but uh, just keep at it and see what happens. All right, cool. Yeah, uh, I discussed with uh, Mariam yesterday about uh, uh, the plant matches or work worker turns that will be uh, that will be done subsequently upon the or after making the the t-shirts. Uh, for the work, and um, we want to do it in such a way that it will not just be a casual, uh, a casual something. Uh, my plan is uh, they organize it well. Uh, they have a venue that uh, uh, after after the match they can they can converge there and uh, maybe uh, the, the, the visitors or the, the invitees who took part in the match they could uh, get to know something about uh, the, the new presentation too. So uh, it's not just like they come and uh, get uh, people, uh, friends and uh, relations and all that, like they come and match and just go away. It will not be productive. So, we want people to see what is what the driving forces behind this uh, behind this endeavor. It is like in a, it is like in marketing. You know, um, when you drive traffic, you want to maximize your traffic. You want to see how many. Uh, how many conversions conversions have uh, you have had from your from your campaign? And uh, we're not really looking to 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 convert uh, con, uh, convert uh, people, but uh, to present to them uh, something about uh, the worldwide educators or the the new just some some light talk 
So it, sh- it shouldn't just be like uh, um, uh, some, uh, let me say, wasted effort because our main thrust should be to step up awareness. What is it that is giving people uh, this, uh, em- uh, this impetus? What is it that is igniting people to uh, to carry out uh, such a project? What, why are they concerned about uh, the, the, the deforestation, the pollution and all the like? There is something that is, uh, that is uh, engineering this. And uh, we would like them to know about this at the end of the match. So uh, my proposal is there will be a venue uh, for 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 meeting, even if just for that day. Uh, have a place where the matches could uh, converge after they maybe have some light refreshments, uh, some little talk, and all the like. And then, well, and uh, maybe addresses are exchanged and all that stuff. Then they go away. That is. That is the the, the conversion uh, marketing strategy, and just to have just to have a work and then people disperse, it's like wasted effort to me. So, I want to make sure uh, uh, the people on the on the ground they they plan this well before they take off, before they do anything. So I don't know what you think about this, Dwayne. <clears throat> well, you can have fun doing it any way you want. What I see is is that a step at a time, and that is that uh, just getting people familiar with the idea of the all-natural environment, that refers to the isness life is, and it's a lot of steps to get there. So, uh, you know, again, I uh, I would look at uh, you know what's going on there. Uh, if people are uh, have any concern about their environment, etc., or even know what to do, sure, people are concerned about the environment, but what are they doing? So I would I would just take it a step at a time, and uh, you know, it's kind of like getting a bunch of cats and birds together. You know, how do you organize them? You know, they're gonna kind of do what they're gonna do, and. You know, when you kind of let people do whatever they do, let's see what happens. So, yeah, I see organized events, etc., and they're engineered a particular way. And so, uh, you know, again, I <clears throat> look at look at the environment of Africa, look at the animals and and things like that out there, and how many of them how many of them have been caged. <clears throat> And is that necessary? So, uh, again, when you walk out there in the wild and you see them just, you know, where they are, where they've decided to be, uh, you know, that makes sense. As opposed to rounding them all up like a herd of cattle, etc. So, again, but you decide you'll you'll figure it out. And, uh, again, I just see that just giving them the idea of that, the all-natural environment, that be- that's a reality all its own. Uh, without even mentioning, you know, the new presentation is just something, is a mechanical thing here that we've created. But the all-natural environment is the whole of life. That's That references the whole of life. The new presentation represents and references, you know, what is being presented here basically in the physical sense, you see. <clears throat> but you decide, you decide how you're going to do it. It's your thing. Okay.